Hi, and welcome to Faith on Film, episode numero uno. That's right, this is my first show, and I'm so excited because my guest is a well-known Hollywood actress. That's right, I always say go big or go home. She is best known for her role as Ben Matlock's assistant, Michelle Thomas, in the legal drama Matlock. So stay tuned as we find out how and why she made the transition to also work on faith-based films, here on Faith on Film. Well, I got to tell you, I am so excited today because, again, this is my first show. And how in the world I was able to land a Hollywood star for my first show is beyond me. But let me, let me give her a, an introduction here, a proper introduction. Nancy Stafford is familiar to millions as Andy Griffith's law partner on the TV series Matlock. She's been a series regular on six TV series, including the five years on Matlock, three years on the Emmy Award-winning St. Elsewhere, ABC Sidekicks, and began her acting career as a regular on the NBC daytime drama The Doctors. She's also a speaker, an author, and you know what? If I keep reading this, I'll, I'll just take up the whole show and never really get to talk to her. So let's just go on to Nancy. Nancy, how are you? Welcome to Faith on Film. Oh, thank you, Isaac. I am so honored you invited me to be on your first show. I love you. I adore you. Oh, and I'm very you. proud of you. Thank project. you. I'll send you the check a little later. <laughs> um, no, really, um, when I was preparing to do these shows, um, I just, I'm thinking, who can I put on as my first guest? There's got to be somebody big. And uh, your name Aww. came right up to the top. So you. here you are. Um, yeah. Now, the purpose of this show is to bring awareness to the, the viewing audience about people that are involved in the faith-based industry. Now, I know you're, of course, a Hollywood person but at the same time you've done a lot of faith-based content so you know what let's take the next few minutes and just let us know a little bit about who nancy is and how, how you started in the business how you transitioned from uh maybe being the hollywood actress to doing some of the faith-based movies that you've been doing so just take it away it's the show's yours okay. now <laughs> oh good oh that's a dangerous invitation <laughs> um i've been doing this a long time i was just realizing that today that i'm in my 40th year i've been wow. doing this 40 years and this is not my first profession so you started when you were two <laughs> yes why yes um actually my very first career was a writer i was a graduate journalism graduate at university of florida and my okay. first career was in journalism and i kind of got drafted into doing some modeling and commercials in miami where i was based at the time miami florida right. which was a big market for commercials and from there, transitioned to see if, okay, let's see if I could do this acting thing, which prompted me to move to New York and study. So it took me from Miami to New York. And then when the soap ended, I came to Los Angeles, and I've been out here 35 years. Oh, my um, goodness. It's been a long haul. And it's not always been easy, but it's been an unbelievable, wonderful, blessed ride. And I am so very grateful to be able to have sustained a career this many years. I mean, I've learned one lesson. I get to teach a lot of um, students all around mm -hmm. the country. I do high school and middle school and college uh, oh creative my. arts classes all over. And one of the things I love to tell people is think of our careers not as a sprint, but it's right. a marathon. Yes. And man, I've been running a very long marathon. <laughs> it's a long journey, isn't it? <laughs> yes. But it's also um, an interesting one because along the way, as I got older, you know, I went from being ingenue to then the young mom mm -hmm. and then the career person and now I'm grandma. But then as my faith got more and more and more real and personal and strong to me, I started turning down more and more work, especially because the industry, and as you mm -hmm. well know, the reason you're doing a wonderful show like this is we've seen a turn in Hollywood. Yes. We've seen a turn in our culture. And so the content has gotten a lot more edgy, a lot more out there, and it doesn't reflect my faith. Right. So I began to try then to want to create content. So I've been on a, a road now in most recent years of doing a lot of uh, beginning to produce projects, beginning to direct, beginning to find projects that actually they find me that really are a more accurate reflection of what I care about, what I feel I want to present to the world, what okay. I think truth and beauty really is all about. So um, all that to say, I've turned down a lot of work over the years, but then I even turned down faith work 
over Ooh, the years because okay. at the beginning I was doing, I mean, I'm a Hollywood girl. I'm a secular, I've made my career mm -hmm. in secular entertainment. Um, so the first films that began to be offered to me, I didn't think they were very good. I didn't like the stories. I didn't think they were, they weren't, um, production values weren't really sure. what I wanted to be a part of. So I said no a lot. And then I finally did a, a movie for Pure Flix called The Wager with Randy okay, Travis. I remember it. And that was my intro to the faith world. And then from there, I've done more and more. But I also turned down a lot of faith films. Sure. Not, not just because of uh, that I don't think the content, I mean, the production will be good. But, but it's not true. You know, we'll talk about mm -hmm. that maybe a little later about the, the, okay. the idea that just because something has the word faith attached to it doesn't mean it's, it's that's the true. truth. That's true. And I get a lot of content sent in to me uh, to take a look at that is sent to me as a Christian movie. And when I look at it, I'm thinking, whoa, this, there's no way. I, I actually got sent one that within a few, the first 10 minutes, there must have been at least five F-bombs. And then as oh I God. continued watching, there was full frontal <laughs> nudity. Oh, my gosh. And it was sent well, to me. This is when I was working at TBN. It was sent to me. Uh, as a possible movie to show on TBN, I'm thinking, wow. no, not going to work. Not going to happen. No. So, yeah, you, you do have to but watch it, out. You do. And there's yeah. also subtle um, yeah. subtle lies that I think filmmakers aren't even fully aware of, writers aren't aware of. But right. I think we as the gatekeepers, too, I feel like you and I both are, we not only are performers, but we also, I think, part of our responsibility is to be a part of projects that are going to promote truth. Yes. So when you get a script that, for instance, I got one not long ago where the mother uh, dies. It's a sweet little family movie, but the mother tragically dies, and she becomes an angel. Mm -hmm. And the little girl sees her mother as an angel all the time. And I, and I take a lot of time with these screenwriters mm -hmm. because I really want, I give them copious notes and all of that. But I said, you know, really... Theologically, that's not that's what happens. We don't, we don't become angels. Oh, I know, but that's just, it's better for the story. I said, yeah, but <laughs> you can't do that. You know, so anyway, we, we, have a, we still have a long way to go. And we actually, in the community of faith, create film creators too. We right. have just as many challenges and, sure. and hiccups in the well, secular world. Yeah, and there's, there's even also the whole concept of um, various theologies, even within Christianism, uh, where you know you might have something that is okay with this particular uh, you know uh, theological background versus yeah. denomination uh -huh. versus this other ones, and so it does become uh, difficult. But you know what? You said something interesting, and uh, I want to follow up on that. But we're going to take a quick little break right now, and then uh, we'll come back and talk some more about this. Okay? Don't go away, folks. We'll be right back. <laughs> Cell reproduction, more than duplication. It's careful selection and organization, ensuring the perfect balance for development and growth. Powerful, so is our programming. Parables, the leader in empowering entertainment. Parables, be empowered. Start your free trial today. This summer, come to Orlando and bring your family to the Holy Land experience, where the true heroes live. See with your own eyes the stories of the Bible come to life as you have never seen them before. Through breathtaking live stage musical productions, you and your family will encounter the true heroes of our history. this summer at Orlando's premier family vacation destination, the Holy Land Experience, where the true heroes live. I wonder how long a dolphin lives. I wonder if they can make cookies in space. I wonder if 
Why do the people start brushing our teeth? I wonder if people and dinosaurs ever lived together. Want to find out? I wonder how much a cloud weighs. Welcome back to Faith on Film. We're here with my good friend Nancy, and uh, we've been talking about movies. And uh, yeah. Nancy, you said something on the first segment here that really stirred something in me. And you were talking about movies and, and kind of how bad they have gotten uh, and how, uh, you know, it, it follows what we've been, I guess, how our culture has been. However, I think that maybe our culture is changing because of of the movies that are that are being made and you know now i find that you've got even a lot of christians being very acceptant of uh lifestyles that normally they wouldn't have because but but because they've seen these movies now and it's become such a, a normal thing for them they're very acceptant of them what what would you think about that i think it's i think you're right and i think it, i think it kind of goes both ways as far as mm -hmm. um media driving cultural yes. values and cultural values being uh, reinforced by media. So it just becomes right. this perpetual thing. But you know, we, especially Hollywood, yes. the, the, it's a pretty scary thing when you realize that we are the greatest exporter of values yeah, in yes. the world, right. on the globe. That our entertainment is going all over the world. And we're telling, so every time you turn on TV or open up your computer or on your phone, looking at even YouTube videos, whatever, mm -hmm. We're being told what to think. Yes. And so we have to be very discerning um, as viewers across the board, whether you profess Christ or not. You just need to learn to be a, cons a proper consumer of media. Yeah. And, um, but we as Christians are not any better oftentimes. So, and here's where I think we have the greatest exciting opportunity as people of faith who are content creators. We, we don't have to be like the world that just holds up a mirror and either reflects mm -hmm. what the culture is or perpetrates it, perpetrates a value system. Instead, we actually can affect culture, not just reflect it, but affect it. Yes. So we have a chance to show people who they could be, who in our highest, best selves, as an indwelling Christ within us, who we are, who we can be not just a distorted view of a lost and debauched, hopeless kind of a world. And when used well and used properly, I think um, creators of content, of Christian content, have a chance to really impact our world for great good. It's gotta be done artistically, but it's gotta be done in truth. One, one, of, the, one of the key things I love about the Apostle Paul in Philippians, where he's talking about in chapter four, remember he's talking about rejoice always. I say, again, right. I say rejoice and, you know, let your gentleness, he described how we're supposed to present ourselves. Let your gentleness yeah. be known to all. A little bit later, he goes down and he says this list of things that we ought to be able to put forth. And he says, whatever is true, first on the list is truth. Whatever's true, whatever's right, whatever's pure and noble and uplifting, whatever is beautiful, whatever is trustworthy, whatever is excellent, think on these things. So if we start thinking about the content we can create as being life-changing to a hurting world that really is seeking mm -hmm. something uplifting and ennobling, not to be more diminished, right. we have a chance to really impact this world for great good. Well, you just read a whole list of things that should be the way I look at it is they should be the ingredients of of our entertainment. And, you know, just like we take care of our body's health, uh, and one of the things that we do is usually read the ingredients on whatever food we're going to buy, you know, and we read, oh, this yeah. has this and this has that. It's got too much sugar, too much uh, stuff. I can't even, you know, I, I can't even say what it is. I have no idea. And that helps us decide whether we want to eat that or not. Maybe that's the same thing we need to do with our entertainment is take a look at the ingredients and do they have those values that you just mentioned or right. are the values that they have, you know, values that are unhealthy for our soul? 
That's right. That's so true. That's a great analogy. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there's been statistics, and you probably know them as well as I. I think Barna or somebody did a stat that said that the consuming habits of people of faith mm -hmm. are absolutely no different than people of the world. Yeah, that is so sad, isn't they it? Watch, it's sad. They watch the same TV. They go to the same feature films. Look, I'm not saying that we need to be people that dig our head into a hole in the ground and are unaware of what the earth world is ha happening in the world. But we, back to your very first point in our conversation, we forget how deeply impacted our soul mm -hmm. is by the things that come at us. And we've got a media out there that is driving an agenda. Everyone has a point of view. There's right. not anybody that doesn't have a point of view. We as believers have a strong point of view that you just described as our list of ingredients. But so does, there's an agenda that's coming mm -hmm. right out of Hollywood. There's an agenda that simply comes out of any other uh, content creator. And it's not, I don't want to say that everybody is, is bent on evil, but it's their point of view. Right. And if we're not careful, we just get swept into the point of view that's given to us and we have to learn to be discerning. Yeah. Well, to go back to the ingredients and all that, um, I know that I was diagnosed with diabetes many years ago, you know, and, and I can see why it was because I was eating very unhealthy food, whether it be, you know, I love chocolate, so uh, chocolate cake, donuts, uh, you name it. If it was sweet, I wanted it. Uh, but at one point when I was told that I was going to have to go on insulin, I said, oh my gosh, I can't do that. So... Right. I changed my eating lifestyle, and it made such a huge difference. And then that's when God actually spoke to me and said, well, what about the health of your soul? Uh, yeah. And so I began to change those habits and have noticed a huge uh, improvement in my soul. Because you got to remember, your soul is what, uh, what uh, controls your thoughts and your emotions. Okay, it's not the right. spirit. The spirit, you know, we're made of a, a physical body, uh, our soul, and, and our spirit. Our spirit talks to God all the time, and that's how, you know, we communicate with God. But the soul actually has a lot of control because it controls our thoughts and our emotions. And if right. it's unhealthy, um, you're going to end up a real messed up person. Doesn't mean I'm. doesn't mean it's going to send you to hell. It just simply means that uh, you're going to be rather weak while you're here on earth, the way I look at it. So That's it's important right. to take a look at that, you know. Absolutely right. I totally agree with you. Yeah. Well, I tell you what, we're going to take another quick little break here and come back and talk some more. This is, this is really exciting stuff to talk about. So we're going to come back and share a little bit more about how to maintain a healthy soul. Right back in a minute. Sunflowers, to pollinate and reproduce, they turn and face the sun. Nature's way of reminding us that for ultimate growth, we must seek the light. Parables, the leader in empowering entertainment. Parables, be empowered. Start your free trial today. we can't see. I wonder why there's so many stars in the universe. I wonder if we ever looked like apes. You want to find out? I wonder if puppy 
these have belly buttons. And welcome back to Faith on Film, show numero uno. This is so exciting. We've got Nancy Stafford with us today. Nancy, we were talking uh, so far in the first two segments about the, the you know healthy entertainment. Um, what do you have anything else maybe to add to that right now? Well, just we've talked about it so so much, and I so appreciate the conversation. Mm -hmm. um, just that we have we know that the power of media is that it can influence and affect people's attitudes right. and their viewpoints and their perspectives. And so we have the capacity to either um, show people what they could become. We can show them um, the possibilities that lie before them. We can enhance and ennoble people's lives instead right. of continuing to diminish them, as I fear so much of entertainment is doing that's coming out of the world. So, um, A, I want us to just all of us be committed to doing more of that mm -hmm. kind of content. B, those who are viewing it, I want you to commit to going and supporting yeah. that kind of content when Very it does important. come to theaters or come on streaming networks. Yeah. And um, also, would you pray? I think we have forgotten the power of prayer that we really can um, bombard the gates of heaven and pray for those people like you, like me, and like all of your guests this season who are in this field we need your prayers yes. out there. Those of you who like this kind of entertainment, pray that God will use us and empower us and enable us to be in positions mm -hmm. that really can make a difference. Well, now, I know you're doing your part. Uh, you've, you've got several projects you're working on. What are some of the latest projects that, uh, that you're involved with? Ah, it's a busy season. I'm so glad. That's fantastic. I just wrapped, yeah, thanks. I just wrapped a wonderful movie called First Lady. And what I love about a career like mine is over so many years you get to be the star and you get to be a tiny little cameo role <laughs> so you get to do it all and in first lady i get to be first lady i'm the star of this wonderful little movie so nina may has written and directed and produced this delightful charming movie that'll be coming out soon um i also just had my directorial debut i'm so excited a film feature film called damaged goods which was oh. produced in conjunction with Asbury University, a wonderful oh, yes, Christian yes. college in Kentucky. I co-directed with one of their recent grad students. So that is coming out. We're in post-production now. And I'm just about to go shoot a movie for Liberty University in, Con oh, in Kentucky. Goodness. Virginia, rather. I'm sorry, Virginia. Liberty. Um, called Eleanor's Bench with Karen Abercrombie. And got two or three other things in the works and more books and more speaking and traveling. And people can find out what I'm up to on my website at nancystafford.com or following me on social media would be great. Fantastic. I stay now, busy. Yeah, it looks like it. Uh, now, you, you did mention that uh, you're also an author, or I mentioned it on your, on your uh, intro here. Uh, you've got some books? I do. I've written a couple of books. Mm -hmm. um, Beauty by the Book. The key is the subtitle, Seeing Yourself as God Sees okay. You. It's about knowing our true inner beauty and our inner worth and value. And the second book is called The Wonder of His Love, A Journey into the Heart of God. So I also get the joy and privilege of traveling all over the country and speaking at churches and to women's conferences and to mass, you know, mixed audiences mm -hmm. all over the place. And I'm, I could not feel more fulfilled when I get to do that. Do you ever get to sleep? I do. <laughs> Okay. I do. I'm also starting to produce. I've got three or four projects that I really am trying to shepherd through the production hmm. pipeline that I think are very worthy projects that I hope you'll be seeing in the near future. Oh, that's fantastic. And again, they can find out how to reach you through going to your website, how to get your mm -hmm. books, uh, how to invite you to speak at their event or something like that. Yes. Fantastic. I love that. Just well, Nancy. www.nancystafford.com. Okay, fantastic. And it'll be down at the bottom of the screen, right about here. Okay. <laughs> so listen, uh, this has been fantastic. Time seems to fly by so fast uh, doing this show. I, maybe I need to do an hour-long show. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, it just has gone by really fast. But I enjoyed the conversation quite a bit. And uh, we'll probably have you back on another show later on because I think there's so much more to talk with you about. So uh, thank you. Thank you so thank much you, for taking the time. Folks, Thank don't go you. away. We'll be right back.
Sight and Sound Theaters invites you to experience one of the most powerful Bible stories ever told. Samson, you're going to deliver our people from the Philistines. God gave him the strength to fight thousands. Where does he get his strength from? Nobody's that strong. But his greatest challenge will be living with his own choices. Who are you? Delilah. We want you to find out the secret of his strength. We will destroy Samson. I don't know! Playing in Branson for one last encore season. Get ready for a mighty adventure for the whole family. You are my rock and my strength. Be with me today. Samson, live on stage at Sight and Sound Theaters in Branson, Missouri. I'm Jonah, I'm from Fort Worth. I'm Noah Long from Colorado. Hi, I'm Rayma, and I'm from Oklahoma. From TFI, I expected uh, to be in a classroom and to be on set. But what I got was so much more. I expect a lot of uh, classroom situations, but what I got was a lot more hands-on, and it was more tailored to your interest in the filmmaking world. A lot of great teaching and information that I could apply to what I what I love and what I do. I came to TFI for my mom. She is really passionate about learning film and directing, and so I came as a favor to her, and I'm really glad that I did. Get over here to TFI. Welcome back to Faith on Film. I want to thank you for joining us for our very first show. And of course, a big thank you to Nancy Stafford. Don't forget to check out her website and learn more about Nancy. Also, I want to invite you to check out Parables TV, our main sponsor, a place where you can watch all kinds of great faith and family entertainment, movies, documentaries, children's shows, all kinds of great content for you and your family. And of course, check out our own show website, faithonfilmtv.com. And follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Faith on Phil. Until next time, have a great week.